Well, the second board of China's Shenzhen Stock Exchange goes into operation Friday, and that is after a three-and-a-half-year wait. China halted initial share sales in the city in October of 2000. Markets there continue to slide for the next three years as well. Joining us now to talk about the uh, second board's prospects is Philip Chan. He is the director of research at Shenyan Wangguo, the Hong Kong unit of China's second largest brokerage. Very good to have you on the program with us today, Philip. Uh, now, the Hang Seng Hi. China Enterprise Index, uh, which does track mainland companies uh, traded in Hong Kong is down 21 percent uh, so far this year. What do you make now the timing of the second board's debut? Yeah, I mean, they're basically targeting, um, you know, d different types of companies. You know, with the, the H shares, the China Enterprises listed in Hong Kong, most of them are, are, uh, are state state control companies, uh, large cap companies in basic industries. Whereas the, um, the the target of the second board in Shenzhen are mainly you know private enterprises um, in in um, say in industries which are not really well um, uh, well say uh, covered in the the main markets or uh, cannot cannot get access to capital so easily um, from say the the state-run banks um, so it's it's a different market completely right what about um you know, what's going on with China now? The, they're, of course, trying to cool uh, the economy there. What effect has that had on investor demand? It has had an effect. It's had an effect, obviously, on um, foreign institutions, um, their demand for stocks. Um, it's also had an effect on the, uh, the main board exchanges, the A-share exchanges in China. Um, however, Part of the reason why there's been some effect on the the Asia boards in China is because of the um, the, the 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 launch of this this new board tomorrow. Okay, how liquid would you say is trading likely to be on the second board now? We expect that uh, the trading will be quite uh, quite active in the beginning because the the um, they're launching um, you know small cap eight small cap companies in one go. And uh, we expect more more listings in due course, um, and because they're small cap, um, they're going to be targeted by retail investors, and um, they're, they're the most predominant type of investor in China still. Um, but so we expect trading will be quite quite active. Okay, now we've got uh, uh, Technologies, a Chinese chip maker, uh, scrapping now plans for its initial public offering earlier this week uh, after failing to find enough demand. How are Shenzhen's second board IPOs uh, likely to fare, would you say? No, I think, I, as I said, I think that uh, they're targeting a different um, market. Um, I, I mean, sorry, different profile. Unfortunately, it because they're going to be small cap, um, it's going to be uh, almost completely controlled by by retail investors, and um, uh, retail investors um, are still very active in uh, in China. Okay, how do you think uh, this? So we, we, yeah. How do you think the second yeah. board now is going to uh, compete really with Hong Kong's uh, Gem Index, which has a similar uh, small and medium-sized uh, Chinese companies listed there? Hmm. Well, they, they are going to be competing, yes, because uh, the H Hong Kong, um, the, the GEM board is trying to target small um, private enterprises in China as well. Um, there will be competition. That's just inevitable. Um, maybe the, the profile may not be exactly the same, but uh, the, the, the targeted companies are the same. What about some of the risks uh, investors are going to be facing uh, uh, from the new second board? Well, the at the moment, the um, it, it's not going to be a, a sort of like a true second board in the sense that there's going to be like that um, you know a, another board where these companies are listed. It's just that they're going to be segregated uh, on the main board, um, and the target companies will be um, will these be these smaller enterprises. Um, but uh, the the risks at the moment are probably not much different to this, um, to investors investing in the main boards in China um, because the requirements at this moment are not dramatically different 
they what what their intention is to make the listing requirements a little bit easier as time goes on after they see what the maybe the initial response is like all right philip it's uh, very good to get your thoughts on this uh, of course this all uh, gets going tomorrow we'll see how things go thank you so much philip chan of shenyan wangguo joining us today well national australia bank has a new vacancy on its board australia's biggest lender says brian clark quit as director to become the chief executive of the Japanese unit of Vodafone. Clark is the sixth board member to leave National Australia after it suffered $248 million in currency trading losses. Shares of National Australia rose one-tenth of a percent Thursday. The stock is down 12 percent, though, so far over the past year.